Stop waiting for the federal government's convened national unity summit to save Nigeria. Former Vice President Atikwa Bubaka says to governors. And Yahya Bello tells governors to implement financial autonomy for judiciary if they believe in restructuring. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has called on Nigerian governors to stop waiting on the federal government to make changes that may not happen anytime soon to resolve the problems challenging the country. Instead, he has asked leaders to convene a national unity summit of all Nigerian governors to iron out the issues. And also, ignorance and mutual suspicion has been said to be the what is feeding the insecurity and criminality in Nigeria? This was said by uh, cleric Umal Kwai, a grand patron of the National Advisory Council of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. Well, joining me to have this conversation is Bimbo Awele. He's a journalist. And, of course, uh, Samaila Musa is the Director of Strategy and Communications of CNG. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. I'm going to start with you, Bimbo. Um, of course, as a journalist and someone who's in the newsroom, you get to get more and more reports on what's happening in Nigeria in terms of insecurity. Um, um, yeah, last weekend I spoke with the INEC um, representative who complained about, you know, the fact that they're being targeted. Um, we're seeing all kinds of violence, but they all seem to have stemmed from one particular case of insecurity, which has now become a hydra-headed monster. Now, when, when the former vice presidents asked that governors um, decide to call a unity summit, I mean, there's so many people who have asked for conferences to be held. When he says that governors should not wait for the presidency to do that, uh, does that not mean that the, the governors may be assuming the duties of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Well, um, being someone who has been in the presidency and who knows how gov government works, uh, that's talking about um, uh, Atiku, um, uh, he should have a better understanding. I feel he should have a better understanding. Uh, the presidency is one, one person. Um, it's, but governors are, seem to be more in control. Gov governors seem to know uh, a bit more sometimes than the presidency. And it kind of, you know, depends on who is running or who is in charge in the presidency. And then let's not forget that Nigeria runs a very, very unique style of uh, uh, federal government. Uh, we are not still, in my opinion, running you know, what the real federal system should be, where gov gov um, states should be autonomous, states should, you know, run their own security system, uh, states should be able to control their own resources. Um, you know, so in, in, in the real sense, governors should actually, you know, be allowed, what Article is saying should play out. But with the kind of federal system that Nigeria runs, everything always points back to the presidency, to the federal government, which is why it kind of seems like it doesn't really have a leg to stand on right now. If the states were really as autonomous as they should be, if the states were so, so to control their own security system, if they were to control their own resources, if we really, really run a real federal system, then perhaps, you know, what you, you said or the suggestions he has put forward we would have a leg to stand on. Even um, Good Luck Jonathan said this yesterday at the program where he was, you know, and this is another ex-president, uh, someone who has also been in presidency, also saying something similar that governors um, are in a position to do more than the president. So why have they not, you know, giving the governors the actual ability or or you know, let us run a real federal system by, you know, letting governors be able to control their own resources, um, you know, letting us have state police, 
and you know letting the local governments you know really run as the the least form of uh, the three tier system that we have i think you know that is really where we should go back to and i think you know that is part of some of the subtle things that article is saying here that we really really need to look into if we, if we want to get out of you know some of the challenges that we face as a, as a nation because the foundation upon which a lot of these things are built you know seems to not be as it should and it's really really part of why we are having uh, some of the facing some of the challenges uh, we have uh, at the moment uh, does this also mean that because there are critics who have said that the reason why the governors, the onus is now on the governors or the governors are beginning to take these stands because maybe the presidency is not necessarily um, living up to its expectations. It has, um, you know, failed the people when it comes to dealing with the issues that the country is facing. And so the governors have taken it upon themselves because they want to protect their citizens as opposed to the body language that they're getting from the federal government. Well, the, the governors have to do something. Um, and I think Nigeria is uh, at, you know, at the precipice of something either great going to happen or something on the other side of the number line going to happen. Uh, because of some of the steps that we are seeing right now, it has uh, never happened before, you know, that we see southern governors meet under uh, a unified umbrella. We've always had the Nigerian Governors Forum. But for the first time, you know, southern governors came together in uh, Asaba Delta State and they came up with a communique and all of a sudden now everybody, you know, seems to be shaking and they're wondering, uh, well, you know, what's going on here? Mm. So it seems, it seems something is about to happen. And the governors are now, you know, trying to live up to a responsibility that they should have lived up to years ago. And, you know, you might want to say, yes, they were not giving uh, free hand or free range to do some of the things, but I think they had, they've always had the opportunity to do these things. Um, they've always had security votes, um, and which a lot of them cannot account for. Uh, we don't know how they spend, you know, some of these monies. And so many other ways, you know, a, a lot of them, you know, um, wait for FAC allocations, they have not been looking inwards to see how they can generate money, you know, to build infrastructure that will lead to job creation, that will, you know, point people in the direction where they will not have to do nefarious things, you know, to try to get money, because poverty is also part of some of these, uh, these security challenges that we're talking about. And if governors had always, you know, done what they're supposed to do, in terms of uh, raising their own internally generated revenue and not wait, waiting for fact all the time, mm -hmm. then perhaps you know we wouldn't be in some of the uh, situations that we are in right now. So uh, the governors are now you know uh, moving in the right direction, in my own opinion. And uh, but everything has to be done with care, with proper calculation, and with precision, mm -hmm. uh, so that you know it doesn't go off the rails. It is a right in the direction that they are coming together and they are unifying, they are putting away that, especially in the South where things can be very, very polarized. Mm. This is the first time. And I, I think, you know, it's, it, it's going in a very good direction. But at the same time, uh, we need to be careful so that it doesn't go or, you know, off the rails. Well, let me go to uh, Ismaila because um, when the Southern governors put out that communique, they mostly happed on... Um, you know, putting a ban on open grazing, and they also called for restructuring. Um, the Senate president has come out to kick against it. Of course, certain um, northern governors are not in agreement with that move by um, the governors in the south. In fact, they have said that um, the, the Senate president had said that the governors are not paying attention uh, to the most important things that uh, the ban on open grazing is not really the solution to the problem that Nigeria is facing. Um, Smila, can you explain to me why you think that, or why the Senate president took that stand? Is that the stand that the CNG is also taking? Do you think that the southern governors um, have something else off their sleeves other than, you know, fighting the level of insecurity that we have in the country? Well, I, I, for me, I don't think uh, anybody is actually worried or jittered about whether they've got something off 
their sleeves or not, it really, it really, I mean, it's almost inconsequential to, to us, you know. But what we just after is, uh, you know, sometimes you want to shy away from taking some positions because you feel at this point, especially now that the country is almost at some kind of precipice where Ellen little things can actually push it to the brink of, you know, anarchy. So really, uh, we felt there should be more kind of uh, some more mature approaches to this. And I tell you why I need to just digress a little bit so that you have a feel of what I'm trying to, the templates I'm trying to lay is that the governors themselves are largely, you know, the, 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 the cause of the problem they try to prefer solutions to. How so? So, the, yeah. Now, the body language is what can really make the difference. I'll tell you one thing. He mentioned something about security votes. You know what? They don't spend a penny on anything in their state on security from that money. That money is given. As a matter of fact, you know, I know Yorubas call it Ajo. We call it Adashi. A governor can bet his life that he's guaranteed every month he can have this contribution of X amount of money that he knows is coming to his state because nobody sees Jack. I give you a, 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 an example in, in the past. Uh, when we have the issue of uh, between Adidibu and uh, Ladoja back in Oyo State then, the man was saying, you know, the late Adidibu was saying, I'm the one who holds the security of the state. I'm the one who says no trouble, no trouble goes anywhere. I'm the one who says there's going to be chaos and everybody and everywhere is, is on fire. If you say you have been spending, you're collecting security votes, you're spending it, if I'm not getting the penny, so you tell me where is it going to, who are you giving it to? Because I'm the one who controls the security. We have had these issues and we have tried to let them understand over here in the north. Now look, some of these issues shouldn't even go out of the governor's office. You wouldn't have some of this chaos. If somebody, I mean, some people are complaining, they have cattle rustlers disturbing them in their area and these are confirmed genuine cases. It doesn't take you, how much does it take you to pull out money from that security vote in a month and buy like 100 cows and begin to shine among these people who are feeling aggrieved. They don't need to resort to arms because over time there's so much neglect. Their castles are rustled, you know, their properties vandalized by the rustlers and all of that. They are being displaced and the governor is keeping them in an IDP. For how long would you do that? And you are collecting security votes. What are you using it for, for so, crying aloud? So, you're telling so really, me. they are part, they are part of and parcel of this whole problem. Because you see, everybody just feel, oh, nobody's going to ask questions. There's no any accountability. They receive that money. Nobody asks any question. Nobody really. So, so this is what you have. So no matter what kind of, well, 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 because, you know, you, you're talking about what they're talking about, uh, the issue of uh, restructuring and all of that. Is this, this body language? Nothing is going to change. It's the same people, the same attitude. They go about those, all those things. Sometimes they come up with different kind of ideas in order to cover up for their inadequacies and all of that. Okay. I mean, come on, we've been sold all these dummies. For how long are we, we going to be living this way? Okay, Smaila, I, 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 I want to go back to what you just said. So you're okay. telling me that in all of all, all the things that you just said, all I got was that if they were the cows were replaced or the government had used, or the governors cases, in your yeah. part were able to deal with cattle rustling, we would not have banditry. So you're telling me that it's okay, or that the result of cattle rustling is why we have banditry, is why we have cows uh, I, I destroying just farms. Example. No, no, no. I, I'm, I, I so I'm trying to understand. Please make me understand why yeah. it has metamorphosed to this point. Because cows were not That's bought for saying. them? I'm saying we have cases, genuine cases in some states. And I give you... Zamfara, for example, we've had an interface with the governor at our own level at CNG. You know, we listen to him. You understand? We know some of most of the testimonies he got when he came on board. I mean, uh, uh, people's uh, uh, grievances and all of that. There are genuine cases where because of what is happening in Zamfara, the illegal mining, 90% of the mining going on in Zamfara is illegal. Now, the people who are doing it illegally need to displace some people so that the business will thrive. Some persons, some villages have been identified after carrying out some seismic tests to say that these people are actually, you know, their, their, their settlement is actually on gold. We need to displace them. In some cases, some of them are cattle rustlers. So what do we do? You organize people, they come rustle their cows just to make sure that they leave the place. And I'm telling you, most of these people go back and say, okay, since the government, the government is not helping us, they also go and acquire ammunition. Now, I've had where, you know, some of them have been caught who said, well, you can go and verify. My name is so-so-so. 
I had my, my land in social place. I had about 70 cows. I had about 100 or something cows. They were rustled. I complained to the police. Go ask the commission of police. We held meetings several times. Nothing was done. So what I'm saying in essence is that if the state governors have been proactive enough to stem it at its board, to say, look, okay, let's get these genuine cases. You, don't, you guys don't need to resort to ammunition. I mean, carrying out our arms for, because you need to leave. There's quest for survival anyway. How many cows are being rustled here? How many cows are being rustled there? Give, let me have the total, that, you know, so that we can do something. You need to alleviate the suffering of these people. If that has been done, no, you don't need to even call for any money from the federal government. Just your security vote can take care of all of this. But because they don't even remove a dime from the security vote, it's just solely for them. As far as they are concerned, this is their own, you know, consolation. Okay. So what I'm saying in essence is that at their own level, they can take care of some of this without waiting for any money from anywhere outside the security vote. And we have several cases like that. You need to come to the north and ask. There are several of those testimonies going on. And this are the same people who are going back. That's why this thing is on the increase. I will come back to you, you Smiler, because I have... Some of them go into uh, uh, kidnappings. I, I will so come back to you because I have a lot of questions enough. for you and I need okay, uh, that right. need answering. So, but let me go back to Bimbo before we let him go. Uh, Bimbo, okay. let, let, let's talk about um, Reverend Malkwai who's saying that ignorance and, and some other things uh, is responsible for the killings that's happening in Nigeria. He's also said that um, our leaders have not necessarily lived up to the expectations in terms of good um, leadership that, and good governance, and that it's become some sort of a mirage for us in this country, hence the reason why we're having so much chaos from all sides of the country. And he's also said that um, we have mistaken our brothers for enemies because we're ignorant of the history of Nigeria. Does ignorance really do play a, a role in all of the things that we're experiencing today, especially if you look at the south, uh, Southeast? Uh, they're asking for secession. Yesterday, Sunday, Boho was saying that the 2023 polls may not happen in the Southwest uh, for reasons that he stated. So, I mean, there's literally problems everywhere in the country. But does ignorance have a big role to play in all of this? Well, there's a lot to unpack, you know, in all that you've said. Um, but I would like to really understand the context uh, of, you know, with which he has used the word ignorance specifically. Um, perhaps, you know, he was using it in the biblical, you know, context, you know, where well, the was Bible saying says... ignorance about um, history. He was saying ignorance as, as to that we really don't know our history. We do not know how... We came together, and that's why, you know, we're having all of these agitations. Yeah, you no, know, because you know, in the biblical sense, uh, it says, "My people perish for for lack of knowledge." Of so maybe you know that was where he was talking. But you know, the history is part of the problem. You know, if if he was going to talk about that, because the foundation upon which this house was built in the first place. You know, it was not uh, under the best of circumstances. And uh, I, I know a lot of people, you know, will agree with me on, on that. We, the needs, the, there is a need to have a conversation. Every business, even businesses, corporations, after a while, you know, even the successful ones, uh, you look at, you know, known brand names. Every year, Coca-Cola, uh, Pepsi, they don't have to, to rebrand or to you know always do um, large commercials and activations, but every year they sit down, they spend a lot of money, they have a conversation. How do we keep this successful, this this success going? How you know you know do we they, they change their bottle? They they do it. But when you talk about ah, let's have a dialogue in Nigeria, you know to to know where we are going, you know to the, people start to get afraid, and I do not understand why there is a need to have a, a conversation about Nigeria, um, past, present, and future, especially the future. The present right now, I don't even want to go, you know, go, out, go into the present because we might not live here. <laughs> Maria, we might not live here. But, you know, you know talking about what, um, um, you know, uh, was said earlier, I cannot, you know, for the love of me, understand why we are still having problems of cattle rustling in Nigeria. This was an issue that was solved 
in the United States in the 19th century, in Brazil, in Argentina. These issues were solved, you know, and we are still having conversations about open grazing in Nigeria in 2021. Please come on. So these are some of the things, you know, that, you know, we have to have a conversation. It's, it's not really about ignorance. Um, uh, maybe perhaps, you know, that was the context upon which we is talking about ignorance, because we have to understand some things. We do not have to reinvent the wheel. There are a lot of problems that Nigeria you know, is, uh, is dealing with right now, a lot of security challenges that we're dealing with. There are things that have been solved by people who just have to go and buy the software or the hardware and plug it on, on, on the Nigeria motherboard, unless the Nigeria motherboard is outdated and we need to replace the motherboard altogether. But I think a lot of these things are things that we can pay money for. You know. I, I, there are, there are a lot of things that we can pay money for, security. Uh, to think that Nigeria, for example, you know, we are still having issues with electricity in 2011. Electricity plays a huge role in security. Uh, the other day I was um, walking down one of the major streets in Victoria Island and it was around 10 p.m. and I could walk freely because the whole place was lit up. But, you know, and then I got to another street and it was so dark, it was pitch dark, that if somebody jumped me or if somebody was walking two meters in front of me, I wouldn't know. You know, so these are some of the little things. Those are little ways that you can solve security, that you can, you know, solve issues of security. Um, uh, street cams um, and so many things, you know, that we can pay, that we can actually use the security votes for. So it's not really about understanding there are places that are more diverse than Nigeria. South Africa seems to be more diverse than Nigeria. There are so many nationalities in the United States. So it's all about doing what you have to do, have the right infrastructure, and then the people will be okay. All right. Pay money for security. Do what you have to do. Educate and um, innovate. But we don't want to have conversations. When, this, when, when time comes, when people bring up, you know, uh, bring up the issues of uh, let's have the dialogue, let's have a conversation around restructuring, I do not know why we are afraid. And if we don't have those conversations, maybe uh, someday we will okay. just come to you. Well, Pimba, thank you so much. We know we have to let you go because you have other things to attend to. We thank you for speaking with us. All right, back back to you, Islaima. Uh, uh, smile, I beg your pardon. Um, you made an issue of the security vote, so I wanted to, you know, circle back to that. If you are saying that the state governors played a role in what's happening today, now the southern governors have decided to take a stand because they do not want to have more problems in their states, uh, and and that stand may be not. Not everything is going to sit well with everybody. But don't you think that the southern governors are doing something that this, the governors in the north should have done? I mean, they're trying to protect their own people because the, south, the governors in the north have not done so. I mean, for you to make an e example of people who their cattle have been rustled, um, people who've been frustrated, people whose needs have not been met, taking on, um, you know, let's say terrorism, because what's happening now is full-blown terrorism, people carrying AK-47s that are not licensed. Um, so this is a failure on the part of governors in, that, in those areas. For example, uh, in Kaduna State, um, we see what's been happening, the kidnappings, the government has said that they're not going to negotiate. Parents have had to rally around and do GoFundMe so that they can re rescue uh, their children. The soldiers have also done their bit, but then the... Several people we've spoken to, security operatives, um, um, security experts have said that the government's body language is also part of the problem in terms of dealing with the security. And then th there's, th there's also an ethnic and religious undertone as to what's happening in Kaduna states. So again, the governors in that region seem to be under fire. What is the CNG doing? to deal with these issues and liaising with these governments to make sure that they do right by their people? Okay. Um, I think the, one of the first uh, thing you will notice in the statement, because I'm not sure if you've read the statement, we, re we released a statement yesterday, 
you know, you know, uh, but of course, the, one of the first thing we address is that, you know, this is further and it further exposes, you know, uh, uh, the kind of leaders we have in this part of the country. You know, I mean, it's a wake up call for them. You understand for them to actually uh, uh, wake up to the reality on ground. Uh, but having said that, is that there was no time we were not at the forefront of calling them to order, from the president down to the governors. As a matter of fact, you know, some of them don't even want to want, don't want to see our faces because they felt well, whatever we are talking about is personal. We were probably just picking uh, some of a few of them out. I mean, a few of them out, you know, uh, for some kind of for whatever reason they had. Yeah, man, I don't know. But of course, you can't guard us. And I'll tell you a, 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 a point in time where we notice those people are very like a disco. They're not looking for the solution to this problem. They are not after the solution. Rather, probably they are also beneficiaries in this industry of the insecurity in Northern Nigeria. So really, we started making some kind of consultations. We called retired generals, retired GIGs, and all of that. People from different walks of uh, the security system who are retired now, and some clergymen, both Islamic and, and Christian religious uh, clergymen, you know, we, we, we call for a summit in, in, uh, uh, in Kaduna, this kind of summit that is being called for now. We call for this summit in Kaduna at Ariwa House. And unfortunately, on a Monday like this, the summit was to kick start at about 10 a.m. About 300 hoodlums were put together with all manner of ammunition, to come and discuss us at that meeting. Some dignitaries escaped through the windows. That's to tell you the kind of people these people are. Of course, you will know that nobody in this right frame of mind, no youth in this right frame of mind will come when we're trying to look for solution, especially something that is actually one of the greatest problems is confronting us in this part of the country now, will not on the Monday morning leave his work, leave his job, whatever it is, and now go get um, uh, uh, all manner of arms to say, no, these people must not sit. So does this mean, does the this hand mean of that Jacob, somebody is benefiting the of, from the chaos yeah, yeah. and the killings, the insecurity in the north? It does it mean that what there's a higher power that is benefiting from the killings, the insecurity in the north and does not want it to change? Because I'm trying to understand who would send hoodlums to uh, a, a some meeting person, like that. Well, with some person, of course, it's obvious. It's obvious some persons are benefiting from a system. That is absolutely correct. If nobody's benefiting from the system, how do you put hoodlums together? We all know that nothing happens of such in Nigeria without a sponsor. Some persons who are benefiting felt, who are those people that want to put an end to this thing? And they came and attacked us. They dispersed us. It was all over in the news. The next day I was on AIT just to speak about this. You see, that's the problem. So really, I, I feel they all know what they're doing because the same people who are benefiting, and some, in some cases, you, you ask yourself, when people are coming together to say, oh, there's kidnapping in this place, and then we need to negotiate, and all of that, and all of that, you do not know how to contact these people before this crime is being committed, but immediately the crime is being committed, you all of a sudden know the people who can reach them. Within less than 24 hours, your people are already reaching out to them and they are already negotiating. And yet you cannot use the same medium to address these issues. And you tell me, come on. So really, it, what's just mind boggling is how wicked can anybody want, I mean, be well, to be benefiting from these killings, well, you know, and, and all of that. Sometimes when they negotiate, I can tell you that the bandits themselves are actually getting maybe 30 or 40 percent of the money. Well, the I'm, people who are running the industry get the lion's share. Well, Smila, I mean, I would love to continue this conversation because, of course, the million-dollar question is how do we get these people, uh, you know, cut down so that this does not continue because, like you have stated, somebody obviously is gaining and benefiting from this. But I want to say thank you, Smila uh, Musa, for speaking with us. We really, really appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return... Yahya Bailo speaks on restructuring. We'll get to find out after this break. <laughs>